Hello G.I. Joe fans, HCC788 here, and I am at the KY G.I. Joe Winterfest in Shepherdsville, Kentucky. This is my first time at the show. I just stepped out so I can get a quiet space to record this little intro here. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, the sweep that I did of the dealer floor. Uh, we will see friends, people that we know. We will see strangers. We will make new friends. Um, and I'll just want you to check it out. So let's go inside and check out Winterfest, uh, including some nice things that the person bought right there, showing off their stuff. Uh, and, I, and I haven't bought very much, but um, I did uh, meet somebody who's important to me, uh, James DeSimone, a very important name in G.I. Joe fandom. This is someone who was around uh, at the infancy of the G.I. Joe fan community uh, and had a lot to do with this formation. So I'm hoping to talk with James De Simone and maybe pick up a few cool items. So let's go check out inside.
See, what, what better adver advertisement can there be than that?
Hello G.I. Joe fans, HCC788 here, and I am in Kentucky at uh, G.I. Joe Winterfest, and I'm here with James DeSimone. Uh, Mr. DeSimone um, has been a G.I. Joe fan for quite some time, uh, and was instrumental in the uh, formation in the early years of the G.I. Joe fan community, which as you know is something very important to me. Uh, so, uh, Mr. De Simone, thank you very much for uh, talking with us here. You're today. welcome. Glad to be here. Uh, and I'm glad to see you. I was actually really thrilled to see that you made it to the show. Yeah. Um, because um, because of your connection with history and a history that I care very much about. Right. Um, uh, if you don't mind, let's start at the beginning. What was your first encounter with G.I. Joe? My first encounter was uh, I uh, collected cars. I was looking through a car magazine, some guy had an ad in there, looking for G.I. Joe. So I called him up, and I asked him, I said, well, what's the deal with this? He goes, yeah, I collect G.I. Joes, and I go to garage sales, swap meets, whatever. And I hung up with the guy, and, and that was it. And then all of a sudden, within a week, I had this crazy idea of wanting to get a G.I. Joe. And I did. Thousands of them. Yeah, that, um my understanding is that your collection grew large and fast. Yes, it did. Uh, yeah. Yes, it uh, did. Uh, is that when you really started collecting in earnest, or did it take a minute? Uh, no, once I started collecting, I bought everything that I could find. Yes. Um, and uh, do you remember about when that was? Would that have been like in the 12-inch era? Uh, 82, 83, something oh, 82. like that. Cool. Yeah. Um, so, but what was your first interest? Were you first interested in the 12 inch or did you get I only the... had interest in what I had when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, there was no internet, no vaults, nothing, no documentation whatsoever on anything. And so I was just haplessly, hap haplessly, whatever that word is, just buying, consuming everything I want. I, I knew to be G.I. Joe. But I did have a specific thing in mind. And I wanted to collect only what I had when I was a kid. Uh -huh. And that was the very early basic four figures, a couple of vehicles. And I was able to get those immediately. And it just snowballed from there into everything else. It, it always does snowball. Yes, it does. It? That's, yes, that's it where does. we all start. And, yes. then it, and then it gets bigger. Yes. Um, but um, when, uh, so you you had an interest, or you uh, played a G.I. Joe. Right. 12-inch uh, uh, action figures. Right. What did you think of G.I. Joe when it became the small Joe? What, what was your first I, I impression I didn't even know. I didn't even know. Uh, somebody else had asked me, do you, do, you, do you collect the small Joes? And I didn't know there were small Joes. And they said, oh yeah, they sell them at the toy store. So I went to the toy store, growing up Toys R Us, and I was shocked. He, he, this guy wouldn't lie to me. G.I. Joe was not like this big. But I had no care, no interest in them whatsoever. They were just named G.I. Joe. I only wanted the, the old vintage stuff that was no longer being really made. Um, at some point, you, you actually uh, authored some books. And we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. But I, um, at what point? At some, at some point, you were involved in toy shows and in GI Joe shows. How did that come about? Well, in 1991, I lost my job, and I had a newborn son, and uh, I wasn't uh, hurting for money, but I wanted to make sure that I always had an army, and I had tens of thousands of pieces of GI Joe stuff that I wanted to sell. And I knew the best way to do that was to uh, have a lot of people to buy it. Because again, you couldn't go on the internet and say, hey, I got stuff to sell. No eBay, nothing yeah. like that. So I decided to uh, have a show uh, and invite people, because people knew me at the time and they knew I had a lot of stuff. So I decided to have a show right where I lived in California. And uh, what made me different than, or made me successful was that there had been a few other shows specifically for G.I. Joe 
but I was the one that caught Hasbro's attention. Prior to that, Hasbro wouldn't respond to the collecting community whatsoever. But I happened to be at the right time, at the right place, when Hasbro, a year before, was actually going to reintroduce to you. So they seized the moment of coming and participating in our show as a, as a form of um, advertising the brand, which was good for them. And I wanted to ask you about that because you're kind of leading into uh, the G.I. Joe convention that's by a lot of people considered the first G.I. Joe convention right. in 1994. Now you had your oh, that, yeah, before that's not, that. That's yeah. absolutely the stupidest concept yeah. of a of a lie that anybody can come up with. And I, and I, I don't want to ask Did you I say that, that right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. We talked about this a little bit before. Um, right. That 1994 show on the USS Intrepid, right. um, again, is often cited as the first G.I. Joe convention. Right. Um, what is your recollection of that and how that came about? Okay, well, prior to the, that particular event, I had produced uh, at least three other shows. And uh, in 1993, I guess, I advertised that I was going to have uh, another big, really huge event with Hasbro sponsorship uh, in an undisclosed location in New York City. In the meantime, I knew where it was going to be. I was already on the signed contract, but Hasbro had different plans. And Hasbro stole that show from me and gave it to the other two guys that wind up producing the show. And that's that's what became of that. I still have the original contract. It's a well-known documented fact, other than terrible, shitty rumors out there that it didn't happen. That's not my problem, and I don't care. I've always been curious about that because I, I have... I had seen some snippets here and there, and right. I knew that you had shows before that. Yeah, three shows um, But there seems to have been some kind of transition that I was never really right. clear about. Right, so right, that, that right. does help kind of clear that yeah. up. Yeah, right. Now, in spite of that, I still went on to produce what people know as the best shows out there. I did the second Intrepid show. I did the Port Tucket, Rhode Island show. I did the Kentucky show. I did the Annapolis, Maryland show. And, you know, I had to, even though there were other shows happening at the time, I had a large following. Uh, and that following, and the, and the blessing, by the way, uh, to be successful in a time where I didn't have a license, I didn't have, uh, I didn't have Hasbro's blessing or whatever the case is, and still, in spite of that, I thrived. And I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that. Um, Around this time, um, maybe a little before then, okay. you, you had a, uh, some books, um, uh, produced, like some guides. Sure, like yes. That. I think that in 1993, there was a collector's guide to completing right. uh, G.I. Joe action oh, figures and accessories, if I remember the title correctly. Yeah, something like that, yes. Uh, how, did, um, how did that come about? Uh, what gave you that idea, well, and what compelled you to do that? I had this book prior to that. Okay, yes, and I've seen and, that. And this book encompasses the 12 inch figure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was the only person in the world known at the time to have everything. And it's all documented here. Uh, there was the, the hobby of three and three quarter inch stuff was up and coming. And I was the only person in the world to know to have all of that too. Both loose and in box. Just like I did with all of this stuff. And I, I seized that opportunity right away with the blessing and licensing from Hasbro. Uh, to do a book like what I did for the large guys, for the little guys. Best selling book of all time, collectively. Of any other toy books written collectively, I've outsold every other book. Um, something I, I try to point out to people is that at the time that was made, uh, I mean, there wasn't a resource. You couldn't just go online and find no, these things. No. This was how you were able to figure out what accessories were right. figures. You got to understand. I laid the ground book, the groundwork for every other book that plagiarized my work that came afterwards, and I'll put that blatantly. 
I did all the legwork, all the, all the research, everything, and everybody else after me just came along and did, said, okay, I'm gonna do it better than he did. Uh, and so and those were photos of figures from your collection, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I own every figure, loose, and every carded figure. Now, you know, I can't believe the pettiness of some of these. Okay? They would say, oh no, the color on that rifle is wrong. Or, oh no, that rifle goes with this set. Well, the fact of the matter is, Hasbro authenticated everything. Right. The fact of the matter is that probably if you find 10 figures on a card, three of them are going to look different. Because the colors, the variations, whatever. So nobody, nobody can say that the, the hobby or the figure or the line was a finite thing. It is, it is what it was, and you, and you got what you get. I don't, I don't you get what you got. I think very many people were like uh, variation hunting right. at that time. Right. Uh, some of that stuff is documented now. Right. But, I mean, some of these things were still on the pegs at the time. Okay. The well, let me tell you something. Yeah. Again, Hasbro themselves personally told me this. In my questioning to them, why, why are you making variations? He goes, and they had found out. The collectors thrive on those stupid little variations. I still do. And Hasbro's exact words were to me, if that's what they want, that's what we're going to give them. And they proceeded to go ahead and make products with different things just to drive up the market so the people would buy more of it and Hasbro would sell more. As I've always suspected. <laughs> no, no, that. Yeah. You're hearing it from yeah. me. Um, so, uh, you continue to do some, some show. Well, actually, I want to uh, backtrack a little bit. So, that 1994 show on the Intrepid, um, that was a bit of a, a watershed. They announced kind of the end of Real American Hero and the beginning of this new Sergeant Savage. Uh, do you have any recollection of that? Or no, I had, I had no interest whatsoever. Um, in anything new that was being produced. It, it, it didn't seem to go over well. So, I, uh, well, okay, so that was the other thing. Hasbro and I actually had arguments over this. If you're going to make it for the collector, make it right. And they proceeded to make it wrong. Simple as that. Don Levine came out with the first thing that was right. He made an exact replica of the original 1964. Problem with that, it was way overpriced. Should have made it said it was five bucks instead of fifty-five bucks. All right. So what's the question? Um, um, you did some shows after that ninety-four show. How long did you continue to do GI Joe shows? Ten years? More? Um, I don't know. Do you still? You can ask somebody else. They'll yeah. know. <laughs> uh, do you still? Do you still? I, 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 there's a show in California that people for years wanted me to come back and do it. And then finally, after relentless people asking me, and these were my friends, I, I said, okay, well, I, I need it to be easy for you. And uh, sure enough, they got the promoter of another show, uh, gave me a space, a located separate room, where I had my own little thing, got my own dealers, and, and that's successful. That still goes on to this day. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. But it's on a small scale. I don't promote it. Yes. You know, I don't produce it or anything like that. I just participate in it. And that's because I I got too many other things that I want, want to do. I travel all over the world. I love my life. I got a great life. And, you know, I, I don't want to work with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So anyway. Um, yeah. Do you still, do you still collect? <laughs> Um, no. Yeah. However, I I got on this kick of having wanting to get these particular figures of all kinds of genres uh, that could fly. Okay. They made one for James Bond. They made one for Captain Action, and they made a half a dozen of for GI Joe. And at this show, I came here deliberately, intentionally to find that. Right. And I was fortunate enough to buy everything I needed at this show. Awesome. And I didn't realize that, you know, I didn't squabble over price or anything. I would always say, hey, what's your best cash price? But the point is, I everybody, individual, had one of the pieces that I needed, 
that I just made that thing learn that I don't have to look for them again. And that was my philosophy in collecting back then. Yeah. I would see so many people squabble over either a dollar or a few hundred dollars looking for something, spending so much time and effort looking for that, that they didn't realize, you know, it was like my wife. She would jump around from store to store and say, five cents on potatoes. Really? Thank you very much. Pay the price. It's only a few dollars more. And you'll save all that time, effort, aggravation, whatever, looking for it. So that's what I did. I was fortunate enough to be in a position at this show to find everything I want. I don't have to look. Thank you. Got it. There you go. Was there a was there a time? <laughs> he's a tie. He's, he's like that. Um, there you go. Was there a time when you when you stepped away from collecting? And was there a reason if you did step away from collecting? I, I passed away actually. I died 12 years ago. Flatline died on an operating table. It took them 10 minutes to revive me. So I was flatline dead for 10 minutes. When I came back, I was revived. I had half a heart that I was living on. But I realized two things. I didn't say no, no light, no time. Tell everybody neither the Lord or the devil wanted me. They both sent me back. Here I am. <laughs> and I didn't take a damn thing with me. You know what I mean? And plus, my health was in such poor condition that I realized the less stuff I had in life, the better off I was going to be. So I started liquidating my collecting. I stopped doing sales. Uh, had a couple of estate sales. And yeah, the, the, I, I sold just about everything that I wanted to sell. I still have a lot of stuff that I, I tell them I'm going to die with. I let my kids sell for a dollar at a garage sale, make, make a few dollars for luck. Although my kids are smart enough to know that what I got is what I want. So yeah. there's, two, there's two things about what I got what I want. Half of it could be worth money, half of it ain't worth a dime. But it's what I want. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's more happy for me, always, in my collecting life, to have what I want, as opposed to the monetary value of it. And I never bought a single thing with the idea, of, well, I, you know, am I going to get my money out of it? Yeah. And that was so insignificant in my collecting values that, to this day, I don't care what I get for it because I want it. Anyway, that's encouraging to hear because that's kind of been my approach. Right. So it's, it's 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 very encouraging to hear. Yeah. Thank you. Um, well, um, thank you for taking the time to sit down with me. I really appreciate the window into uh, the history that I care a lot about, um, and I, I hope that we can see you around uh, thank you. again in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, like I said, I travel a lot, so whether or not I get here, I, I don't want to commit now because. Right now, Jan July, is that when the show is? Is uh, open for me, but I don't want it to be. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be able to, I want to have that block, that yeah. space blocked in for some other adventure in my life. But, you know, I just came back from the Philippines on Monday, and I may be here today. Nice. You know what I mean? So, I mean, like, you know, I, I could squeeze a weekend in. Well, well, thank you for squeezing this week. <laughs> and thank you for, uh, for taking the time. I really do appreciate it. Uh, James Day Simone, thanks everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm here outside of Winterfest as I wrap things up. I just wanted to try to find a quiet place, although it's not too quiet because that's the freeway back there, but a somewhat quiet place uh, to wrap this up and say uh, thanks to everyone who uh, said hello. In fact, I just saw somebody uh, in the elevator who said hello, and uh, it's really nice to meet everybody. Um, thanks to uh, to uh, everyone who was so kind. Everybody's been uh, really a gem at this show. Uh, thank you to to Mike uh, from What's on Joe Mind. Uh, thank you to Jason uh, from Order of Battle Podcast. Thanks to the guys from uh, Podcast from the Pit uh, and Anything Joe's. And uh, uh, thanks to uh, uh, Roma Collectibles, uh, GI Jason, uh, all, uh, uh, thank you to James DeSimone, who was very kind to do uh, an interview. What, uh, what a, a treat to talk to someone uh, who has been a part of GI Joe history. That was special. Um, but uh, for now, I think I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, I will put together this video as uh, quickly as I can, and hopefully it'll be up uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, but there's just enough time uh, for me to go back in, uh, say bye to everyone, 
uh, and then that'll be it. So uh, thanks again to uh, G.I. Joe KY Winterfest, and I um, and, uh, hope to see everyone again soon. We're back in the hotel room, and I just wanted to show you guys what I got. Uh, I didn't get a lot. I didn't really get anything that filled any gaps in the collection. Uh, I kind of focused on weird stuff, uh, weird and fun stuff. It's not all weird. Some of it's kind of weird, but uh, mostly fun stuff more than uh, getting things for the collection. And I started with this uh, this 2D um, pressed uh, uh, plastic uh, cutout of hooded Cobra Commander. I thought that was appropriate, uh, so that was fun. And um, when I met James De Simone, I had him sign, and I think he signed it um, inside somewhere. He signed his books <laughs> somewhere inside. Uh, so I got this signed by James De Simone, uh, and I also met this gentleman from uh, Alpha One Creative, um, and he was really cool. Um, and I got uh, I got a patch that I shall add to my patch and pin shirt. Um, this is the last thing I got. And this is, well, it's, it is what it says it is. This is a fun school police jeep, obviously modeled off of the vamp. Uh, I was curious about it. I've seen these around, never had one, thought I'd give it a shot, give it a try. Uh, but the, I think the most important and the most cuddly thing I got was, um, was a plush Cobra Commander here. Uh, you know, he wants to take over the world, but that doesn't mean he's not soft and squishy. Uh, it doesn't mean he doesn't want hugs. Even, uh, even world dictators need hugs sometimes. Uh, so that's it. That's really basically the entire haul. I am, um, again, not not really focused on adding, you know, vintage items to the collection. But I mean, this book is pretty cool. I will get some use out of that, um, and uh, I'll put this up somewhere to annoy the neighbors. Uh, so beautiful stuff uh, thanks to everyone who came up and said hi uh, some folks who uh, got some pictures with me and somebody who had me sign something um, and thanks to Mike uh, who is looming over my shoulder right now yeah did you see, did you see that looming uh, anyway it's, uh, but thanks um, and I, I, I tried to thank everyone um, in my last clip uh, that I saw if I missed anyone uh, my, I apologize but sincerely Thanks, everyone, and I guess uh, next stop will be uh, Joe Fest in Augusta, Georgia. That's the next show on my calendar for this year, so I will see you then.